create an instant Lura without any training. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I'm gonna show you a fantastic process that needs only six images as an input and will create an instant Lura on the fly with no training at all. Here you can see an example of the input image and the output image beside that. So this is very nice for applying style Lura's to your image. Face Lura's can also work as you can see with this comparison between a photo and the output I got from that, but it is not specifically good at that. So let's have a look at how that process works. It's called Aloe Vera's Instant Lura, and I have to tell you this is working inside of ComfUI, but all of the best and newest things are working inside of ComfUI, so you might really want to check that out. It's not really that complicated. Before we can use this fantastic process, there is some preparation we have to do. Of course, you do need ComfUI and I have a video here about how to install that. It's very easy because ComfUI is self contained. If you already have ComfUI, what you want to do is to go into the ComfUI Windows Portable folder and there into the Update folder. Open that up and use the Update ComfUI in Python dependencies file. Double click that and let it run through to download all of the necessary updates. Once this has been done, you want to close ComfUI and then you want to go again into the ComfUI folder in there again into the ComfUI folder and in there into the custom notes folder. Now, when you're in here, click up here and write CMD. This is going to give you the command window. Go back to our Aloe Vera page here on Civit AI. You scroll down a little bit more and it shows you here the links to four collections of different notes and extensions for ComfUI. And as it tells you down here, what you want to write is git clone and then the web address of that extension. So do that for each of these links. So let's say for the first link, copy the link, go to the CMD window, write git clone, leave a space and put the web address, then hit enter. This is going to download the files from this GitHub link. After you've installed these four links, what you want to do is use the run NVIDIA GPU bet. This will download some extra files for the custom nodes you have just installed. Next, we need some additional models for this to work. There is two of them. One is called the IP Adapter Plus and the other one is called Model Safe Tensor. Down here, it tells you exactly where to load them. So the Model Safe Tensor goes into Models and in there into Clip Vision. To visualize that for you, you go inside of the ComfUI Windows Portable folder, into the ComfUI folder, into the Models folder, and there you have your clip vision folder where you will put the model safe tensors file. And then of course you also have here the IP adapter plus SD 1.5 bin and this goes into the custom nodes IP adapter models. So inside of the ComfUI Windows Portable folder, inside of the ComfUI folder, you go to the custom nodes, you go to the IP adapter ComfUI, you go to the models folder and this is where this goes. Now again, we are starting the run NVIDIA GPU bat to open up ComfUI. If you already have installed another UI like Automatic 11.11, you can link the models you have already downloaded. For that, go into ComfUI Windows Portable, there into the ComfUI folder, and in there you find the extras model paths YAML file. You want to right click on that and open that with the text editor. I'm using Notepad++, which is free, you open it up and here you can see the addresses for the different folders for the checkpoints, the config files, the VAEs, the LORAs and so on. And as you can see here for me, I've set mine to automatic 1111, the location of these specific models. You save that file afterwards and restart ComfUI. So now everything is loaded from these locations. Next, you want to go back again to the Aloe Vera page on Civit AI. And here on the right side, you have multiple workflows that you can download and use. Now here is how that workflow looks for different examples. 
In this case, you can see on the right side, I have my six input images. These I have created with Midjourney as variations of the same style of a wolf hat that is red on black with this kind of line art design here. So we are using all of this as an input. Now here's something I want to point out to you. First of all, it's really important what kind of model you load over here because some models will be better with that other models will be not so good with this. I found that for these kind of comic styles, Ref Animated works pretty well, but you might also use other models. Also, I want to suggest to you to not use the batch size down here if you also do upscaling at the same time, because that was really, really slow for me. So go one picture by one picture. I found that the whole process works best with the sampler DPMPP2S Ancestral that is also set up when you load the workflow the first time. Other samplers didn't work as well for me. Up here where you have the high res fix, you have these two nodes and they might overlap in that area. So you might want to pull these two nodes out so they stand on their own. The reason for that is because the upscaling is here in this extra blue area. And when you right click on this, you can set it to bypass group nodes. And that means that this part of the render process is not being used. So if you have a slow CPU, you might not want to do the upscaling process because that can take quite a while. However, if you still want to use that or experiment with that, you can again right click and then set group nodes to always. And this is turned on again. And in the case where you have batch size one, you should be okay with upscaling one image at a time. That shouldn't be a problem, even if it might be a little bit slow. As you can see here from the output, we got something that is pretty close to the input. So this is very nice for style Loras. And here on the right side, as you can see, we have the upscale, which has also a very nice and very detailed quality. So I really enjoy the output I got from this. Another thing that's important to point out here is that over here we have the instant LoRa weight. You want to play with the weight over here to see what kind of results you get from that. One thing you can do here is to click inside of the number and then move your mouse left to right to adjust the value on the fly. You can also double click to type this in with your keyboard. Next, I experimented with the signs. For that, I went to free pick and downloaded this character sheet of a cute fox design. Then I separated out the individual foxes to have them as input images for my instant LoRa. And over here, I used the sign of a cute fox on white background with the Reliberate version 10 model. Again, you can play around with other models. I have my instant LoRa here on value 0.5. And as you can see here, the output is pretty amazing and it sticks also pretty close to the input, even though it's not exactly the same thing, but also we want to avoid having the exact same thing because of copyright reasons. But with this, you can create a lot of interesting inspirations and variations of that design. Next, I used scenes from the movie Blade Runner and kept them all in this kind of interesting eerie blue from all of these scenes to use that as a style inspiration. In this case, I'm using Realistic Vision version 5.1. You might use any version that works for you. I set it to a higher resolution here, but you can also experiment with that. My positive prompt is man standing on a rooftop looking over a city at night. Blade Runner movie scene cinematic. And here we have the low resolution output, which is pretty amazing. And over here we have the high resolution version, which is even more amazing. And also here you can see a variation of that. This other version is made with Realistic Vision 5.1. In the case that you're wondering, how do I load these workflows? How do I start the render process? Here on the right side, you have this very nice field with a lot of buttons on that. Here you can save the workflow if you want, although it's also interesting to notice that the workflow is saved as metadata in every single image that ComfyUI outputs so that you have always a backup of your workflow. But you can also load them here as a JSON file if you want to. You can save them as a JSON file. And to render the images, you want to click here on QPrompt to start the render process. 
That's it already, my friends, and I would say the images resulting for that are pretty amazing and there is no time spent on training any kind of LoRa, any kind of setup or keywording or anything of that. You can just use your six input images and then apply the styles to the models and to your prompts to make variations of that and create amazing artworks from the inspirations that you create yourself or you find on the internet. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.